This dwarf, Alcurin by name, led us through curving tunnels that opened upon a great cavern. There lay a sprawling city, the capital of their kingdom. This greedy race was one tremendously despised by many of our ancestors, due in part to their disinterest in protecting the beautiful and green places of their world. Indeed, it was said amongst us that the dwarves would destroy Erdia's beauty for wealth and power. And yet, their masons shaped structures of great beauty from rock. Their smiths fashioned marvellous wonders out of metal and other materials they found underground. These were things that we elves could not help but admire. Their mastery of ancient magic was also remarkable. By carving runes onto surfaces such as shields, hammers, or even walls, and imbuing them with a force not understood by even the mightiest elven sorcerers, they could work powerful and complex spells. Some of these rune workings were used in defensive structures against enemies, and had to be temporarily suppressed in order to allow Anlinde and the Lich access into the heart of the city. The Castle of the King. Welcome, friends. It's been a long time since your kingsman last visited us. But tell me, what are your names? What brings you here to the depths of the Kingdom of Hearthgar? And most importantly, why is that accursed lich in this chamber? We can explain, your highness. I am Galas, leader of the elves from the Valley of Alinea. This is Anlinde, and... The lich is Malkishar our guide and quite an important ally of ours. We would not be standing here in one piece without his help. I have heard enough of this old wild creature you brought into my domain. Didn't you realize how dangerous it is to deactivate our defenses just to let your pet in? I wouldn't have tolerate this folly if you weren't from the Quinnoth kin. I beg your pardon, of your highness, but what are you talking about? King, your fellow dwarves spoke of elves from the desert when they first met us. Am I to assume that they identified themselves as the Quenoth people? Did they truly come from the desert to visit you? You ask too many questions. Aye, they were the Quenoth elves of the desert. It was a few centuries ago that they helped our brethren in the south and opened the route for the restoration of our kingdom. You never heard of them before. That's unexpected. So, from whence do you come? I hadn't stopped to wonder why you seem so different from what our historians describe. I reckon you're not from the desert, then. That's correct. We actually come from a secluded valley far from here, in which our ancestors found a favourable environment to settle. We were invaded by an army of the same force that I see has already arrived at your doors, the Chaos Empire. But I had never heard before of any large population of our kind living in the desert. What is this that you did not tell me before, Anlinde? There was a civil war, sometime after the fall, Gallus. You have to understand that such a world-changing event had similar consequences for every other civilization on the great continent and beyond. After the matter was settled and the flames of conflict subsided, our ancestors parted ways. Two groups, different directions. We are the direct descendants of the group led by Lord Telchior of Thelion. No one ever heard from the other group again. Until now. That would explain why many of the foes we have fought thus far are, are aware of our existence. Your Highness, what was the fate of the Quenoth Elves? It's said they were in search of a new home in the far north, led by a young boy much like ye, by the name of Kalasar. Our kin sent a soldier along them, who eventually returned to tell quite the unusual tale. To put things in perspective, you had to realise that much of the green in the land was still desert back then. I can it have been a few centuries, but aye, things have changed fast since then. Some believe an otherworldly force works to fix this fractured world bit by bit. Oh, 
That made the tale I was gonna tell. Anyway, they did not continue north. They were attacked by humans, led by a wretched abomination posing as their goddess Elo. But the humans were no match for young Kalasar and his conviction indeed. Then they were contacted by Merfolk, who guided them to Zokka, Zok, Zokthan, some island in the ocean. There they slew the impersonator Yechnagoth, the eater of souls, and this feat dispelled a curse that kept the minds of the peoples over the sands tied to the monster's will. But it's just a story from a lunatic who barely made it back home. The poor thing provided them with a vivid account of the journey though. You may ask Althirin later for all details I omitted for the sake of brevity if you're so inclined. <laughs> Sounds quite impressive for a mere band of elves. Ah, but it wasn't just a band of them. They brought all of their people for the journey. Anyway, what do you know about the Chaos Empire? Murderers and thieves, aided by the so-called mother of all demons from beyond this world. That's what they are. Aye. About 200 years ago, they forced the southern clans in Gnalvarden to abandon their caves and move here. But far too many were slaughtered or captured before their king acceded to evacuate. The Chaos Fiends even got their claws on some mighty war contraptions our brethren designed. And the poor engineers. We never heard of them again. We have been told a powerful warlord is bringing an army to strike against Erthgar, as if there were anything in these caves that could be useful to them. <laughs> the point is, I heard your people are looking for a new home, but we cannot provide you with one here and now. However, the far north has remained relatively peaceful for a couple of centuries, and I'm sure humans would welcome you in their country. I just cannot guarantee that it will last for long. Oh, if you can forgive me, there are so many things to do before we do battle with the demons. If there's anything left to discuss, it must wait till dinner. It is no problem, your highness. We are grateful for your counsel. What do we do now? I don't think the Dwarf King is going to be of help to us. He seems largely ignorant of less mundane affairs. We'll need to search for the Lady of Light and the her consort on our own. But his advice is sound, actually. If there are humans in the far north, there might be a chance for our people to survive the forthcoming invasion if we send them to those lands. I shall lead an expedition to the far north, then. Gallas, as the Regent Lord appointed by Lord Ledinor, you should be beside us when we find her. It will be an important first meeting after all this time since the fall of our ancestors. Ah, missed some text there, sorry about that. My lord, are you suggesting that I... If it weren't for Lady Unarie and you, we would have lost many more men and women to the sands. Your leadership in my absence was essential to our survival. Yes, my lord, I... If I'm allowed to interrupt, Lord Gallas, I may have heard of this Lady of Light before. <laughs> ye never said exactly what ye were looking for in these caves. What do you know about her? We have some lore about this elvish heroine. From a hundred years or so after the first cataclysm, it is quite confusing really, but it's not the point. My late master once told me a fascinating story of what he found when exploring the deepest caves in these mountains. He was but a lad back then, though quite a well-versed one in the art of rune crafting. He was searching for rare metals that can only be found near the warmer caves, where lava occasionally spurs from below and strange ferocious monsters lurk behind every corner. It was around those parts that with his runic artifacts he detected a strong power like he'd never seen before, hiding beneath. He said that he could see a light in the darkness of the abyss, and he felt there was something alive there. Alas, he didn't have the resources or time to proceed further down. Even till his death, he wondered what might have been there. That 
could be the lead we needed. Did your master by any chance leave indications as to how to reach those caves? Aye, he did. I could guide you as well. It's not exactly advisable to explore the uncharted depths of the heart of Earth yet if you're not dwarf. If that is the thing you can do. I mean, without the king taking offence to this plan. We wouldn't need to rely on you if I were allowed to turn the elves into undead. Why would you want to risk your life on our mission anyway? <sighs> and in any case, you all saved our lives, and in particular mine. I'm indebted for you saving me from the followers of Uriah. Sending you on a suicidal mission, though, would not be good form, would it? Hmm, fair enough, Althurin. We'll gladly accept your help. Certainly, as Althurin said, we would encounter all sorts of exotic creatures that could only thrive in the eternal shadows of Erdia. Most were understandably frightened by our presence. From their perspective, we were invaders, terrifying monsters who could end their pitiful lives in an instant with our fire and magic. But unlike the invaders we had faced in our valley, we did not intend to harm or kill every living thing standing in our way. Scenario 9, the library. Many apologies for the uh, clicking over of crucial dialogue there. You could probably pause the video and uh, read up on what it said. Uh, doing it live, unfortunately, I don't have that luxury. Um, nice scenario, that. One thing that's interesting about this campaign is it does assume there's a particular choice that you can make in... Um, the background is there's a particular choice that you can make in the campaign under the Burning Suns. You can either side with the Dwarfs or with the Trolls, and this campaign is very much assuming that you sided with the Dwarfs back then, and that a Dwarf made it back home. Um, I sided with the uh, Trolls, and I think the humane thing to do when you play that campaign is to side with the Trolls, because the Dwarves are basically just colonial dickheads when you meet them in that scenario. Um, but nevertheless, it is what it is, and... Uh, I did what I had to do, and in this campaign, history is written differently, by the victors one might say. Anyhow, we will make a start on Scenario 9, the library. Deeper and deeper we went, through the labyrinthine dark caverns, until we reached the igneous passages that the late mentor of our dwarf guide first found for us. It's hard to believe we've made it this far, in spite of all the obstacles in our way. Ha! You would never have survived the trials of the desert and the confrontations with those demons without me around, ready to save your useless posteriors. Well, he does have a point. Sure, that is why we are grateful for your help. But before we proceed further, I must ask... These passages appear to have been used relatively recently. We should be on the watch for enemies. Right. Let us proceed cautiously then. What did you want to ask me, Galas? Nothing important. Let's go. Vague, vague foreshadowing there. Ooh. As Gallus has become accustomed to moving on rough cave terrain, his move co movement cost on them has decreased by one. <laughs> That's pretty handy, because otherwise Gallus is a proper slowpoke when it comes to caverns, even with the special ring I got for him. Okay, so we can explore and find the exit, we can optionally defeat all enemy leaders, and we don't want any of our heroes to die, and that now includes Althir and the Dwarf. So we'll have to keep him alive. Good thing that we kept him alive in the previous scenario, though I am told that uh, that actually doesn't make any difference. If he dies, he just flees and then comes back in the cutscene. Still, I feel like I did it the proper way, and Althurin should hopefully be grateful to me. Um, it would be nice if he'd ended up with more experience, but I don't think he succeeded in really killing anything. He was just trying to whack things with his hammer and mostly failing. 
Okay, so what have we got here? We're at the top right corner of the map. We've got a pathway leading down this way. I think what's going to be really useful in this scenario is ghosts and spectres and that line of unit. And so I'm going to hire some. I'm going to hire a castle full of bats and ghosts, I think, in the first instance. Okay, so on the right hand side, it looks like there just isn't anything much of interest. I can send this bat over, see if it can see more. With this much gold, I ought to be able to push to get the win in this scenario. Are there any ghosts that I can recall that have experience? Oh yeah, there are a few. I'll have you. They cost the same if you recall them, so no problem there. Any others? There is that blood bat. Ah, oh, Vemir the civilian down at the bottom of the list. Keeping up appearances. Taking the rear. And I've got a couple of... I should have a couple of shadows. I can only actually see one. That's worrying. Did one of them die in some, in some way that I didn't see? Just this one. Yeah, it seems like I've only got one shadow. Oh no, there they are. They're just very close to each other in the list. Easy to skim over them. I'm gonna... I'll, I'll definitely want them for this scenario. For now, I'm going to have regular ghosts, and they're going to go out and do some scouting. Hopefully, this will be all of the unit types that I need. Malkesha, you just push on. Althurin, you just... Oh! Character description missed. Can I get that if I click on him? No, that's a different description. Well, let's see what, what he's good at. He's basically resistant to everything, less resistant to arcane, cold, and fire, more resistant to impact, pierce, and blade. So physical damage is not much of a threat against him, but he doesn't have enormous amounts of health. Hopefully he can level up soon. Um, he's got pretty decent resistances, and he's got pretty good movement underground. He's got a magical melee attack, which is useful for hitting hard-to-hit creatures. Is this the kind of scenario where I'm going to get swarmed by annoying bats? Let's see. No, apparently not. I shouldn't be so cynical. What can you see over here? Okay, that's the edge of the map and you don't see anything interesting there, but maybe down here in the fire. Hey, or maybe not. You go down this way. Now there too, it looks like you just reach impassable terrain. That's not impassable. But ah, but that is. That's weird. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, no one can go further that way. Makes sense, that's the way I came from, but uh, I don't much like the use of the kind of hard edge of map fog with zero. It seems a bit kind of fake. Alright, Malkashar, you progress, and here we've got a Deathblade. Um, you're nasty, not horrifically so. Stick Anlande behind, stick the Dwarf behind her, and get some ghosts ready to bring up the rear. And we can take this guy out, he's only a level 2 unit. Malkashar is going to take hits, but that's fine. Okay. Now the trouble with shadows is they don't deal arcane damage, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, now I'm going to have this Death Baron for his leadership abilities. He's unfortunately quite slow, which down here is a bit of a handicap. Similarly, 
this dark sorcerer who I would like to be able to level up into a necromancer. And Quothad the Trapper, who I would like to be able to level up again. In addition, I'm going to need a healer. So, Sothenia the Shide is the best bet for that, I think. She's resilient in intelligence, she's almost at an after maximum level advancement, so I'll bring her back. Over here, we shall have this Wraith and a Shadow. And that will not be the end of it. Oh, look at Malkeshar doing his arcane damage. Lovely. You're not even that hurt. Now is that zero defense? No, we can't see it. Uh, no, not interesting. Alright, well, points for completionist tendencies, I guess. Althurian, you're the one who needs the kill. You're the one who will get the kill. You hop onto that. You stand in front of her. Oh, there's another one. All right. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> let's see who he, who he chooses to go for. And not, there's not anything interesting to the north. Forward, men. go for here, if I can, is just overwhelming force. Mostly with arcane units. Maybe get another healer in there? And I'll get some level 3 units as well. Like these powerful spectres. Milongil the Lich is also tempting, but I think I'm going to leave him on the bench. Her on the bench, sorry, she is a she. Is this going to be enough? It ought to be enough for now. I think I'm over recruiting if I recruit any more. Um, I'm already on minus 12 gold, so I'll leave it at that and just try and power through with these expensive, powerful troops. Um, a few more villagers should solve the income problem. easy kill for Althurin, I hope. Get you to a level relatively soon, and I can even scout with one of these ghosts now. Oh, there we go, it's a bone shooter. Not a threat to Malkashar, not a threat to my ghosts. So I'm going to go around the corner with you. What's that? That's a revenant. Okay, yeah, again. Not super worried by these regular undead units. And up here, there is an undead leader. 
at least I assume no one else would send level 1 skeletons around. It's not the sort of thing that campaign designers tend to place. pretty conservative play here, but hey, my most powerful units are still at the back. So it's tricky moving people in these scenarios, because on the one hand, you want to move your fast units as fast as possible, on the other hand, you don't want your slow units to fall behind any further than they need to. So how do you square that circle? Usually I do it by trying to keep everyone together, but sometimes I regret that because everyone's too far behind. Alright, my enormous number of arcane damage dealing troops are coming up. Pointless suicide attack, excellent. Oh, here we go. She looks lovely. The elves are here. Where, where, where the hell are our dear warlord's troops? I suppose I will have to make do with what little I have, as usual. This is bad news. It appears the Chaos Empire's forces somehow managed to get a head start. We need to stop them, and secure these caves before they can advance any further. Okay, no new objective, but it looks like there are some new enemies around, including a blood bat. Um, I've got actually no one here who is in any danger from a blood bat. I'm going to go for the aggression strategy here and just run straight in. I mean, ghosts ought to just wreck everything, basically, in this situation. And then down here, where we've got a castle, we can leave that to the tougher troops, while the faster troops go around the side. I'm going to send a wraith there, so that we have someone a bit hencher around. Shame that Malkashar can't quite make it to that village. Um, I need to now draw out these troops without causing too much confusion. Um, I guess what I'm going to do here is just let Malkashar take a number of hits from bats and get healed. These bats can go around the side there and reach my wraith. That's a little frustrating. Not really sure what to do about that. I think just keep moving, see what happens. It's basically the strat. Signpost. Forward, run forward. God, that's so fast in the caves now. So fast. Run forward, run forward, run forward. You're going to end up at the back, aren't you? Oh well. Run forward, run forward, run forward. You want to try and kill my ghost, but you're not going to succeed. You're just going to give him experience. Ah, that's my ghost. That was 
unlucky. There's a purple leader down here too, and the purple leader is sending blade attacks. Alright, who's the best here at taking out bats? feel like a shadow ought to be pretty handy for this. Couple of hits. But then they are about as tough as paper towels, even against fairly weak enemies. Should I just defend here? Should I actually take Malkashar back? I don't want him to kill all these skeleton riders, that would be awkward. So instead of standing at the front, you maybe go back. You keep scouting. Is that a village? No, it's not a village. There is a signpost here. And it says, go away. Well, <laughs> that's a provocation, isn't it? You found an interesting building, crude in design. There appears to be someone hiding inside. You may want to get a living unit, this is not a bat, to take a look inside. <laughs> okay, um, I don't have that many living units that aren't bats in this scenario. Um, so, you just come back and we're going to send... Who am I going to send? Should I send this trapper? Yeah, you're the first. You're the nearest. You'll only take. It'll only take you four turns to get there. What about Gallus? Take you four turns as well. But Gallus, I'm gonna. I'm gonna need you more in the fight. So you. Yeah, you. You just run. You've only got. 40%, percent you got how much defense have you got where you are right now? Not a huge amount. Um, it's far from obvious to me how best to take this fight. With Anne Lindsay, or will she get chopped to shreds? Either way, this ghost needs to get out of the way. Well, on the road you're 30%, so you can be 40% here. Can that that revenant can't reach you? So it's just going to be bats and um, a ton of horsemen, basically. So you try. You've only got 48 health. You're not that tough. Maybe Galas actually, because you'll have 50% defense. Yeah, you're the best person to put here. And then you'll have to get the kill as well, because I don't want anyone else going out there. Someone, you can come down here. Um, what happens if you attack one of these guys? Uh, you'll probably kill them, and that's not great. Because it does mean that... How much damage will they do to you? Not much, not much. Okay. I think this is the sensible thing. Yeah. Guard this side passage. Everyone else can move up. I've got some overwhelmingly powerful troops here. I just need to be able to deploy them correctly. I don't have any problem about winning this 
fight. My problem is, will I be able to win the fight and also not lose any of my good units? Hopefully I should be able to clear this up relatively fast. Anyone left behind? No good. Okay. Nine damage! Someone has got a lot of money and a single track mind because they're recruiting a lot of horsemen. Now it seems silly to let Gallus get any kills, but I'm gonna need to. If I want Gallus to advance. You proceed to that cave. How far am I going to push forward here? That's the question. I feel like I can push forward quite a long way. Um, you standing there and getting rid of this guy is the first step. Good, good. And now someone else, like you, dealing with this guy would be the next step. Okay, very nice. And now I need to get rid of these two, and I think for these, for this job, Anne Linde is well suited because of her amazing ethereal storm attack. Yup, crumbles before me. Who wants to take out this one? Can you do it? Yeah, you probably can. Not sure I want that. Um, but Malkashar. What about you? Uh, not the best use of you. And you. Wraiths are lovely. It's a shame they can't drain from undead. That would just make them the absolute bee's knees. Even you, even you can get in there and get a few strikes in. Not the best in this situation. Not the worst. Galas, step back a bit. Malkashar, you do it. Alright, the way ahead is clear. And we've got Skeleton Riders. And we've got a Revenant over here. And we've got a Bat over here. So now it's about getting everyone into a position where they are relatively safe. Okay. What would happen if you were to attack um, the Skeleton Rider? Well, not, not super much damage. The Revenant's slow, so it can't actually reach anyone who stands directly in front of Anlinde here. Put you there. Can I see anyone else coming? Oh, it's a leech. Not a lich, but a leech. And then I think I'll have you there, and then I'll have <clears throat> Can you go onto the onto the house? If you do that, you might die. But worth it, I think. There's only two of these guys, they shouldn't be able to do truly terrifying amounts of damage. Push on, push on. You're yearning to get into the battle. Maybe I should have been more aggressive this turn. The 
if I plot you there, you could only get attacked by another bat. And if you don't die, you'll get healed, so that's good. And the visibility, though, here is not great. Alright, push, push, push. Bat on bat action. attack my spectre there who's now back on full health. This Wraith really has no experience, that's weird. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we've got a Death Knight in place. You won't actually get leadership from that, will you? No. Shame. The rest of these troops... This, this leech can't even move. Chaos Invader down here. Interesting. So there are troops advancing on my position, and this is a place where I can recruit more. Good thing I recruited some, because I would have needed to push forward, and indeed I am needing to push forward. Next job, um, which no one seems to be in a position to accomplish, uh, is to take out this Revenant, and I kind of thought someone would be able to get there and slash it, but I was wrong. The, you know, who, the people who can get in there are various kinds of undead. So, Spectre. Uh, you're the one I want to die the least, so you please don't. What's back there? A tentacle! Man! So many different classic monsters here. Lots of damage to the spectre. Galas, do you want to just run forward and hire a few expendable troops at this point? That might not be a bad idea. What is this? The ruins of an ancient city? Here? Hmm, the ruins on the floor and walls aren't dwarfish. This is quite interesting! Yep, let's focus on not dying. I think a classic skeleton archer is a handy choice here. Down here, because I've got these guys advancing, I'm going to get some regular skeletons. Just a couple, so that I can block off the movements. And now I think my powerful unit should be safe. Whoa! That's a lot of skeletons coming up on me there. And it looks like I'm going to have to hold out in that, this passageway for a little while without pushing too aggressively forward. And here too. Good thing I got here when I did. And you're even a skirmisher, so you could get through. I forget about you guys. Alright, big enemy force approaching.
Oh, you're gonna come and shoot my. You're gonna shoot my bat, aren't you? I don't like you. You finally come get some healing. There are villagers over here, which I will be able to capture. Oh, and you're not quite there yet. Alright, let's weather the oncoming attacks. Well, Blue, you're a coward. Well, you've acquitted yourself well, even if you later die. That is a good chunk of damage from those invaders. Yeah, like I said, attack the bat. Be a wuss. Come on, big strikes. There we go. So, quoth that, who do we find living in this little house? It is a very unusual location for our home, but it appears that someone indeed lives here. The decorations in this cave seem recent and rushed, and I think I heard noise coming from inside the rustic building. Should I leave, or should I take a look inside? So I can leave, or I can look inside. Now that I'm here, now that I've sent a unit down this way, surely whatever is hiding inside can't be more trouble than the undead running me about. Dot, dot, dot. Let's see. No! Please don't kill me! Huh? A goblin? How did you get here? You have nothing to fear, goblin. We are not here to kill you. Uh, Malkashar, I missed the dialogue, but he's not happy about the situation. What? I used to live in the Northlands, in a small town populated by goblins. Goblins like me. But then, those foul humans came and ransacked it all. They killed everyone, those chaos people. I escaped and tried to find a safe place to live, deep in these caves. And then those horrors came here too. They woke up all those dangerous beasts from underground. And then they tried to turn me into their slave. Oh, so horrible. Seeing as how peril lurks behind every corner around here, would you perhaps prefer to join us? We could provide you with protection from those demons and the undead if you agree to help us as well. Really? Oh, yes, yes! I will be very thankful if you let me join you, yes! Hang on, let me pack my things. This is a very bad idea, Gallas. Gallas! Are you even listening to me? It's just a little goblin and his ferocious mount. What harm could possibly come of letting them fight alongside us? We would be far more concerned if we didn't already allow a necromancer in our ranks. <clears throat> Such careless words coming from an elf elves these days. Okay, let's equal the wolf rider. Let's see if we can keep him alive. That will be our challenge. He is strong, but he's only got 33 hit points, so we're going to have to be careful with him. Quothad is stuck right there for now. And with enemies bearing down on us from every side, that is where we are going to pause. Next time, we will find and defeat the leaders behind this place. <laughs>